Perfect. Okay, guys. So first of all, I like to see guys. Where is everyone tuning in from today? Let's go. I want to see where everyone is tuning in from today. We've got Cape Town. South Africa's always here. <laughs> Kenya. Trisha Washa. Let's go. Kenya's representing today. Another South Africa, East London, Durban, Telford. Okay, okay. Johannesburg, South Africa, Missouri. Yes, Ezekiel, let's go. China. So we got people from all over. I like that. That's why I like to see. Guys, I'm going to go straight into it, okay? So I'm going to share my screen quickly. Um, and what I want to do is, first and foremost, you should always have this. If you're unaware of what this is, this is the compound daily, okay? So this is to help you calculate how much you should be making every day to build your account healthy, okay? So, you know, some people, and they can afford $50 only. Some people can afford 100 So let's show you the differences, okay? Um, you should be making around 5 to 8%, you know? So if you do that for the next... 30 days, okay, next 30 days, guys, because we always like to go in 30 days, and then we don't trade on the re weekend, we reinvest, this is how much you could potentially make, okay, this is how much you could potentially make, okay, right, from $50, right, if you continue that, right, for another 15 days, that's it, look at the difference, you've already added another grand, okay, but this is all up to you guys, this is all up to you and how much you put in the work. And look at this, guys. That's all you need to make on your first day. It's that simple, okay? You don't risk more than 3% of your account, and that's how you grow. Guys, the same thing, $100, right? If you start with $100, this is how much you could potentially make in 30 days, okay? Already, right? Again, the difference, 15 more days, that's half of the time, three grand, Okay? So guys, I just want you to be aware, this is called the compounddaily.org, okay? So have a look at it. What I want from you guys is to print out this sheet and use this as a compass to grow your account. You shouldn't be trading more. When you trade more, you are over trading, okay? And when you make a loss, which intentionally, we, like, we are human guys at the end of the day. So we might make a loss or two. Walk away from the screen. Do not try to revenge trade. There's nothing worse because... The markets don't trade on emotions and neither should you. Okay, moving on, guys. This is called the Forex Factory, right? This is where we see um, what's going on around the world. And, you know, just like a relationship, you wouldn't want to go in and red flag. So you definitely do not want to go anywhere that you see a red flag, even potentially orange, guys. But mainly the red, it could be highly volatile and it's something that you actually do want to avoid. Okay. Next, after this, you can see that we are clear for now, is our currency strength meter, okay? This is called the currency strength meter. And what it is, it can help us see the playing field. What we can see is all the different currencies, the strengths, the differences between it. So let's say, for example, you know my favorite pair, that's AUDCHF. I can see AUD is looking strong and healthy compared to CHF, so I'm predicting that the market is going up. It's just easier to see everything on um, a one-to-one, -one, okay, guys? The next thing that I want to show you guys is how we take our trade, okay? It's very simple. So we go straight to Hourglass, okay? And don't forget, every five minutes, right? Every five minutes, you see there is a timer right here. There is a timer. Look, it's now on two minutes and 20 seconds. Every five minutes, we need to refresh this page. So look, can you see when I don't refresh the page, it's telling me that it's two candles back. It's not showing me where it should be. So again, refresh the page, go in, and there it is. Can you see the difference? It's very important that you do that every five minutes, okay? And note to self, we do not trade with less than a minute left to the candle. With less than a minute left to the candle, you do not want to take a trade because you don't know what the next candle says, okay? So this is hourglass for you. What I'm always looking for is an uptrend or a downtrend. So when I flick through the channels, I'm looking for something like this. And this is why AUDCHF is usually my favorite uh, currency pair because it always does what it says on the tin. So right now for the AD currency is just to know when it says on hourglass put score, it means it's going up, okay? When it says put score, 
especially the point system five it's a strong high chance of it going up okay so this is perfect we're looking at an uptrend anything more than three candles you can see it's going on an uptrend okay to prove that as well we've got aud at 80 and chf at 34. next thing i want to show you guys is the broker okay so right now we're using currently pocket option a few things to know okay a few things to know is um well first when you start you may have um your graph looking like candles okay so what you want to do you see here that there is the currency pair just shift two buttons to the right sorry one button to the right and you can change it to lines okay and this is what the lines will look like it's a bit more accurate now you can either have it on this option or don't me i personally don't have it on there it doesn't make a difference to me but for some people it might and to move in and out of the graph to move in and out of the graph all you need to do is have your mouse hover around here and if you've got a keypad or a mat you could just put your fingers inwards it will minimize the screen or outwards to zoom in okay if you are on a computer i believe you can do the same with the scroller mouse okay it will work the same thing but look, there it is me zooming out now notice the difference when i zoom out it's always good to see what's going on in general over the board but when we're taking a trade, we're taking for the here and now. So we always minimize to see our bigger picture. But then when we zoom in, we can see a little bit more detailed. Can you see it gets a bit more detailed as we go in? So it's very important to zoom in afterwards to see a bit more accurately. Now, the next thing I want you guys to have a look at, okay? Ignore the bottom one because I'm still playing around with it. I'm still trying to figure it out, but for now, the third button from that currency, okay, it's called the indicators. It goes in alphabetical order, column to column. What I want you guys to do is open fractals. I want you guys to open the RSI. And I want you guys to open the Williams in that order, okay? In that order. Once you have the fractals open, it should show up like this, okay? Right? What it would look like is actually originally like this okay that's too many arrows going back and forth it's actually a bit of a distraction what its original intent was is for it to tell you right it's hit this area it's about to go down i don't use it for that okay guys so change the setting can you see when you have the fractals up here on the left where my cursor is click that um, pencil button and change it to five okay less and more accurate so what i'm using this for is to see multiple times that it's hitting a strong point a strong support or resistance that's how i'm using it right now okay the next thing i want you guys to do you'll see the rsi and williams in this order like that click here on the pencil again and change it to five okay i want you guys to change it to five and then click on styles and it should be in this order 80 50 20 okay right you can also change your colors should you want to i've had my colors set like this so i can see it better but yes 80 50 20 and the same your williams should be on 25 and then the styles should be minus 20 to minus 80 okay guys minus 20 to minus 80 so that's setting up the graph okay right here you can see my favorite currencies are the aud so if you want it to be up here to flick through you literally go on here where the currency pairs are and you click on the star they can go away and it can come back it's that simple okay then you have here on the right so i like to trade in 30 seconds guys so there's a couple of things to do to do that right so first thing i want you to see is the money you can always change the amount by percentages by less more or you can simply just click on it and write the amount okay guys the same thing with the timer, right? The timer is set for minimum of one minute timers. But if you click plus or minus, it could change the minutes. If you want more accurate, which is what we're looking for, we're looking for a 30 second trade. Okay, we're looking for a 30 second trade. So what I want you guys to do is click the flag and it will get rid of the strike price, but it will turn into this, which is faster trades. Then you just need to click on the timer itself on the timer itself and you'll be able to change how many seconds you put all right this goes down as far as five seconds which is a bit ridiculous but it happens you could do it 
But guys, we've tested it out. The 30 seconds worked perfectly. Okay. Now, when we're looking for a trade, again, I told you guys, we're looking for an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay. We can see that this is shifted. We can see that this is absolutely shifted right now. But what I want you guys to know is when it's changing, you'll notice a difference in the way everything moves. Okay. So, for example, when we are on an uptrend, you'll notice that the Williams and the RSI, so look, guys, it's always touching the top Bollinger. Okay. When it's on a downtrend, it will consistently touch the bottom Bollinger. Okay. Notice the shift. So now that it's going back up, I believe it's reset itself. Notice that it's hitting the top Bollinger. So what we're waiting for when we're going on an uptrend that we know that it's going up is the pullback, okay? Because no graph just goes up. No graph just goes down. It zigzags its way, okay, into the direction that it's moving. So if it's on an uptrend and we consistently see that it's hitting the top Bollingers, what we're really waiting for is for the RSI, and the Williams, they need to be both in line. They both need to be aligned, okay, guys? When they both hit underneath the bottom Bollinger, when you're on an uptrend, okay, when it hits the bow of the bottom, it means it's oversold and it's going to fly back up. It naturally will. Now, this is just, it's just we've been tested out, okay, guys? But it goes further than that, okay? So look, guys, can you see where the arrow is? I'll just give you another example. When you zoom in, you get it more detailed. There's that spike, okay? So now it's all about predicting the entry points, okay? So this is what the arrow is for, okay? So we can see, look, it keeps hitting this area, once, two, three, four. So I knew that it was going to come back down. What I was waiting for is the RSI and the Williams to match the entry point that I'm looking for. It's so simple, guys, okay? So using the past, we predict our future. We can see areas like this where it could shoot back up, Okay. So there it is. It's touching again. What I wanted you guys to see is the moment it touches the RSI and the Williams, it pushes back up. Okay, guys, it pushes back up, but it needs to really go underneath. I'm talking about um, an area where it's, it's literally hovering underneath it with the Williams. It needs to be in line with it. And then it needs to also match an entry point. Okay, it's not just well and good that it's touched um, the RSI and the Williams, it needs to come back to a support zone or it needs to come back to a resistance. Without that, it could continue. So it's all about understanding that everything needs to align with each other, okay? It's all about getting in on the right timing. So have a look here, right? We saw that this is a strong entry point, okay? These are using the arrows that I have. Can you see once, twice, three times, and you could see that by the curse and the cross hair lines. So having that, I knew it was going to come back down. It's just a matter of waiting for the dip. You saw now that it hit that support zone, the RSI and the Williams, right, in line. Can you see that? It hit all three. It was ready to shoot up. And there it is. Look, if you look down at my timer, I'm taking a 30-second trade right here. It says 26.17. 27. 37 and 47 you're up here you're in profit that's all you need it's literally 30 second trade it's that simple guys so with that i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna stop the recording for today but i just wanted to make sure everyone is updated in um in this recording and you can see how simple it is to take a trade when you look correctly for the trade okay